Hey YouTube, welcome back to the channel. My name's Chris, and if this is your first time here, this channel is dedicated to teaching you everything you need to know about paint and body repair. My goal is to help you with your own DIY project. We've got a great episode for you with a lot of information, kind of a unique repair. We're gonna be repairing this Honda trike, and it has some severe fiberglass damage. We're gonna take care of that today. I'm gonna to show you exactly how to do it. So let's dig in and get started. Okay, so let's take a better look at this Honda Goldwing trike. As you can see, the paint is faded on this lower tub and the luggage rack. The rear compartment door has been severely damaged. It got locked on the owner and he had to break into it, so we're gonna repair that. And then down on the front part of this lower tub, there's a section of fiberglass missing. We're gonna repair that, replace it, and get this thing ready for paint. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do on this Honda trike is to start to disassemble it. We're gonna leave the lower tub together, but we're gonna remove all the tail lights, this top portion of this luggage compartment, we're gonna remove that. But the main thing is this luggage compartment door. I need, it doesn't fit quite right. He started to do some repairs on his own and it's not level with the rest of the panel and there's some fiberglass repair that needs to be done where that last latch assembly is. So let's dig in and get this disassembled. Okay, so now we have this trike all torn apart. We had to take this luggage carrier off and it was a pain in the butt, let me tell you. There was, every time we thought we'd have it off, there would be another bolt and we pretty much dismantled the whole thing. It's gonna be fun putting it back together. That's all I have to say. So this is the box of bolts we took apart. We're gonna have to sand this piece. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, sand this with 320 grit sandpaper and of course we need to address these cracks these spider cracks in this fiberglass um, first we're going to sand it with 320 and then we're going to evaluate it after that but there we may have to do some kind of filler i don't think we will we're probably just going to have to do a heavy coat of catalyzed primer the me1 will work great on that now we're not gonna take this low, lower tub off. We learned our lesson after the luggage rack. So let's do that now, let's get these prepped out. Darius is gonna sand those pieces. We got a few different pieces here. So Darius is gonna go ahead and clean this with some prep solvent, some automotive prep solvent. That's just gonna remove a lot of the uh, road debris, grime and dirt, um, and make sure it's clean and a good surface to sand on. And now he's gonna go over it with the orbital sander and 320 grit sandpaper. He's gonna machine all the large areas and get those sanded so the paint will adhere properly. And then he'll go back over it with some 600 and a scuff pad in those tight and hard to reach areas. Okay, let's take a look at this compartment door, see what we have to do here. Get this back into shape where it's uh, intended to be, and then we'll re-fiberglass this area here, and I'll show you how to do that. 
And then I want to make sure this door is going to line up, shut and shut flush. And as you can see here, this fiberglass section has been busted. We're going to fabricate a piece of fiberglass here and repair that. So let's get right into it and start with this door. Okay, so let's peel this rubber seal off. We'll, we can reattach this later at a later point. See what we have underneath here. Okay, now that I can see what we have here, this has been cut right here and cut right here. Now I'm not sure why that was cut and it looks like a cut here. Oh, I know why. Because it's locked itself in. This is all electric, these latches. And one day it would not open. So that's what he did. The damage he did to this door is he cut it, drilled it, tried to get it open. He got it open, but damaged it pretty good. So what we're going to do, it needs, this needs to be pushed back and aligned with the rest of this. So what I'm going to do is grind this area around here where these cuts are. And then we're going to align this, clamp it in place, and then we'll fiberglass it in. And that should take care of this pretty well. So let's do it now. So what you want to do anytime you're repairing cracks or cuts in fiberglass is you want to V those out. So when you lay the resin and matting in, it sits in that V and strengthens it. Okay, so now I've got this vice grip against the fiberglass and this bracket in the back. And as you can see, that's lined up really nicely. That's where it needs to be. So now I'm going to sand in here and get this prepped out for some fiberglass. Okay, so now I filled those cracks with resin and matting, and we're going to go ahead and build up this edge where this section is missing with resin and fiberglass matting. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to prep out this section of the tub where we're going to section in the fiberglass. I'm just building a backing plate so it will hold the fiberglass in place while I lay the matting in and the resin. And you can do this any way you want, a number of different ways. You could use cardboard. I just chose to use tape. It was quick and easy. And what I'm going to do here is I'm laying down resin in the areas I'm going to put the matting first. So we want to get a good coat of resin on it. We're going to soak the matting and then lay it over that area and then build it up gradually to strengthen it. So the resin I'm using is just the Bondo brand resin, fiberglass resin. Um, I'm also using the, the tight woven fiberglass matting. And I'll leave a link in the description to these products if it's something you're interested in. You can purchase them anywhere, uh, Amazon or your local auto parts store for this fiberglass matting and the resin. And I just got a few cheap paint brushes to uh, smooth that in. And this fiberglass resin and matting is really not that difficult to use. You guys can definitely do this at home. If you have a boat or an RV or a trike that needs to be repaired, um, I would recommend the tight woven matting. Um, as far as the resin goes, just follow the instructions on the back. It comes with an activator. So you mix, pour in the resin, mix it up with an activator. I always add a little bit of extra activator because I don't like to wait for a long time for it to dry. But you could definitely do this at home. And I'm going to do the same thing here on this jam. I'm going to lay in some resin and then I'm going to add the fiberglass. I just cut it into small sheets because I'm really just trying to build up that lip and strengthen that lip since it, you know, the piece was missing, I actually just build it. Um, so I'll just continue putting layers of it on there and strengthen it up and, and get it to be thick so we don't have any issues with it cracking or breaking on the customer. And I'm going to use plenty of resin here. I'm just being very liberal with it. Now, one thing to do to recommend any extra, you're going to have to sand off or grind off. So here's a good look at it after it's hardened up. It's really nice. It's still a little bit thin on that lip, so I'm going to have to address that. But I'm going to grind this, shape it, and get it ready for some filler. 
um, possibly maybe a little bit more fiberglass, but we need to grind that edge off, sand it all down, and then we'll lay another coat on. So the tub fender is all repaired as well. It's all nice and strong. I am gonna, it has a little bit of a low area because I used tape, it, was a, it wasn't very sturdy, so it created a little bit of a low area there. So I'm gonna fill that up with some extra fiberglass and matting, and we're, we'll grind out that edge, get it shaped, and then we'll go over it with some 80 grit. So now I'm just gonna take my file grinder and my angle grinder, and we're gonna clean up this fiberglass matting and resin. And this uh, little file grinder worked really well. It, fit, it happened to fit right in that gap of the jam, so that worked out perfectly. I was able to sand it pretty easy because it would have been real hard to sand in there if I didn't have some kind of tool. It's very hard to sand by hand. And definitely make sure you're wearing the proper safety equipment when you're sanding this resin and matting. You definitely need a respirator and eye protection. Okay, so now we got that jam all sorted out. We're gonna address this door, and it's very thick on this corner where he was doing some fiberglass repair. So I'm grinding it down to thin it out. Um, it is shutting a lot better, but I am gonna remove some of that fiberglass. There's a section that's not really adhering properly, so we're gonna take that out. But right now I'm just shaping it. Uh, and there you can see the, the chunk that's uh, missing now. We're going to have to build that back up. But I've got it all shutting properly. It lines up well. Now the left latch is not, gonna, is not hooked up anymore. So that's not going to be functioning. He's not going to worry have to worry about that locking on him again. But the right latch is the one that's going to hold this thing shut. So I did have to bend the hinge because I think when he was prying on it, it, it might have bent the hinge a little bit. So I straightened that out. And now I'm going to create a V where that missing section is and then i'm going to build it up on the back side first and then we'll build that section with fiberglass matting and resin okay so i've put some tape on the front of this and we're building it up from the back side i went ahead and laid some resin in there so the tape's gonna support it, and then we're laid our first coat of matting, and now we're gonna lay our second coat, and we're probably gonna do th probably four or five layers on this, and then I'll probably have to add some more after that. So we lay the matting on, and then we apply the resin. Here's a good look at the fiberglass repair on the back side of this door. And I also flipped it over and I put some resin on the front. Okay, so now we have this all filled with resin and matting right here. We built it up from the back side. We're gonna grind this all down, flatten it out, and then use some filler on this. And as well as the front here, we're gonna trim all this off. We're also gonna do that on this here. We've built it up. I need to trim this off, grind it down. We're probably gonna have to put some more matting because it's a little wavy here. So we need to straighten that out. Now over here in this portion here, this is about ready for filler. We just need to smooth out this resin. Um, and then we'll put a thin coat of filler in there. I'm gonna use the Roberto R1 body filler and we'll talk about that. And then we'll prep out the rest of this tub and get it ready for primer.
Okay, so we got some more fiberglass work to do on this. This is a low area here, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these, this fiberglass matting, I'm gonna soak it in resin, catalyzed resin, and we'll just lay it in here. I'm gonna go smaller to larger and build this up, and then uh, we'll grind it down, and it'll be flat. Probably do a little bit on the other side as well. Today we'll be using Roberlo's R1 Body Filler, and I told you to remember that name, Roberlo, because they have some great products, and this filler is no exception. This is their budget line of filler, and if you ask me, the only thing budget about this is the price, because it performs amazing. So typically the worst thing about using a cheap body filler or an inexpensive body filler is it sands very hard. They usually get rock hard and it's very difficult to sand. And to me, it's not even worth you know, the savings to get a cheap body filler that doesn't sand well because that just makes your job that much harder. Now it says easy sand on the can and that is not a lie. They've got it knocked out of the park on that. This sands beautifully. In fact, it's the best sanding body filler I've used. Okay, maybe it's not the absolute best, but I'm gonna tell you right now, this compares to all those premium names of, of filler, and it performs just as well as far as the sanding goes. That's my opinion. If you have a different opinion, let me know in the comments below. If you've tried this filler, I wanna know what you think and how you liked it, because as far as the sandability, this stuff sands as good as any of them. Now, as far as the smoothness of the filler, it's very good. It's probably not the best, but it's for a cheap filler, I've used a lot worse. Anything that I use that's $20, around 20 bucks or 25 bucks is usually very bad as far as this as far as laying out smooth. So I will leave some numbers where you can purchase this filler uh, down in the description. I don't think it, they sell it on Amazon, I, um, but I could be wrong. Um, but your local paint suppliers may have it if they carry the, carry the Roberlo line, so check that out. I think it's definitely worth trying to find it if it's a little bit difficult to find because it's so much better than all those inexpensive fillers. And one more thing, guys, I just want to let you know, I will not promote a product unless I absolutely believe in it. You can take that to the bank. I'm not going to steer you wrong. And if I ever do promote something that is crap and you think it's crap, Call me out on it. Let me know down in the comments below. I have no problem with that, but. Okay, so now let's lay the first coat of filler over this fiberglass repair. I think we'll just need one, but then we'll sand it down with some 80 grit 
and get it prepped out for primer. Okay, we're gonna now fill the back side of this door. And just looking at this video, it looks like the filler's pretty, lay, laying down pretty smooth. Looks like it to me. Just saying that, it makes me, it reminds me of when I used to use the stuff called Dynalite. And some of you guys might have used it before. And I used to use it because it was an inexpensive filler. But still, I think that stuff was 25 bucks, And that stuff was so chunky. And it was rock hard to sand. It was a nightmare. This stuff. Compared to this, it's night and day. This is like a top of the line premium body filler compared to Dynalite. So if you're using Dynalite, God bless you. Okay, so this is starting to look really good right now. It's all, it's really strong. I'm just gonna fill a little bit of these uh, pinholes and these low areas I'll strengthen up this backside just a little bit and fill there's some imperfections in this fiberglass we're going to fill and get that all nice and strong then sand it smooth and get it ready to prime Okay, so now we're working on the corner of this tub on this trike, and I've went ahead and put a ton of matting on here. This is really thick. So now what I need to do is square this up, um, flatten this out just a little bit, get rid of all this extra fiberglass. I'm gonna use a combination of tools. I'm gonna use my belt sander, uh, typical grinder, angle grinder here, and smooth this out. And then we'll probably go over it with a DA and some 80 grit to smooth it out before we apply body filler. So let's get this cleaned up right now. We're going to go over it with 80 grit on the interface pad and kind of contour that just a little bit, kind of get it a little bit smoother to accept the body filler. Okay, so as you can see, we have it all fiberglass, nice and sturdy, and we shaped it with some body filler. I'm just gonna go shape it a little bit with a 80 grit on this orbital sander and kind of smooth it all out. And then we'll do a little bit of blocking on here and see if we need to lay some more body filler in there. Okay, so I just went over with some 80 grit and man, I'm really impressed with how this uh, Roberto R1 body filler stands out so easy so i just knocked it down i think i'm going to switch over to 180 now and that's going to remove those 80 grit scratches it's pretty straight so we're going to get it blocked out a little bit i may have to add a little bit of filler on the edge here where there's a little low spot but we'll block it out and see so we'll switch to the 180 and then we'll da this some more Now I'm just going to apply one more thin coat of filler, just a couple little areas to fill. It's sanded out and blocked out really well. It's straight.
Okay, so we went ahead and laid that body filler in there. I went ahead and DA'd over it with a uh, 80 grit sandpaper just to smooth it out. Now we're going to block it. And Okay, so now we're going to run over the front and the back with some 180 grit sandpaper on the orbital sander just to smooth out those 80 grit scratches. Get it all prepped out for the M1 primer. So let's get that done. Okay, so now the body works pretty much ready. I'm just going to go over it with 180 before we prime it, but we need to get the rest of this door ready for primer. So I'm going to remove the license plate, remove this emblem here, sand it all down with 320 on the front and the back, and we'll get ready to prime it. Okay, so I'm just doing the final sanding and the jam of this luggage compartment. We're gonna sand all those rough areas, smooth those out. And let me tell you one way I know that this R1 primer sands very easy. If you ever wanna know, try hand sanding inside a tight area. Try and hand sand body filler that way. It's very difficult. And this sanded very easy. Okay, so now I got Darius hustling to get this taped up. I'm finishing up some sanding on some stone chips of this front of this tub, and then we're gonna fill those with some spot putty. Okay, so now I'm gonna mix up some primer. We are definitely gonna be using the Roberlo ME1 on this tub and these parts. So this is a four to one mixture. I am gonna reduce it about 10% because I don't want it to be a real high build primer on some of these areas because it doesn't need it and that would entail extra sanding. So I'm gonna reduce it about 10% so it's a little bit thinner uh, and it's going to not have such a high build on it. Okay, now we're all ready to spray these parts with the ME1 primer, but before we do that, Listen guys, if you want to help support the channel, you just have to do a few things. Like this video, share this video, subscribe to the channel, and click the bell so you don't miss any new videos. I appreciate each and every one of you. I know though that 93% of you that watch these videos are not subscribed, so do me a favor, smash that subscribe button. So I'm spraying this primer with the 3M AccuSpray gun. It's working out really well with primer and I've sprayed a few cars with it. Uh, it's not my favorite gun, but it does a really good job, even on base coat and clear coat. So um, I will leave a link in the description to this gun. It is around $200 and you can check out my video in the description or I may leave it at the end of this video and get a full review on this gun. This one is not the newest gun. It's not the performance one. It's the one last year's or whatever it was but it's two hundred dollars so i think it's a really good value for the price so when you're spraying primer you just want to put on a medium to wet coat i mean the main thing is you don't want to run primer um, you can lay it on pretty heavy if you have an area that you need to put a heavy coat on and then i let it flash off for just about five to ten minutes and then i'll put a second coat on and this will get this covered well enough. I may even put a third coat on those body uh, areas where we had body filler. So I t as far as the volume, I typically do three turns out from closed. Um, I also usually have a wide spray pattern on my primer unless I'm in an area where I want to have a tight pattern. So you just have to play that by ear. Uh, the PSI on this gun is about 25 PSI um, on the 3M gun. That could change on different guns.
click on this video now and learn how to prep out your vehicle for primer. Hey, if you want to build your skill and increase your knowledge, check out my growing library of how-to videos and stay tuned on the next episode. We'll paint this entire trike, finish it up, and we're going to be testing out a new spray gun. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.